Howdy folks, Shell Presto de Baggio here. In a previous video, I did a traditional watercolor piece using an underpainting and glaze method. Unfortunately, I washed out some of my highlights. I could have added them back in with gouache, but instead I thought I'd do some photoshopping. This video will cover how I use the computer to adjust the contrast, add highlights, and lighten areas and put a little more life and red tones into the lips on this traditional piece. So, as previously stated, uh, I go in and I make some final touch-ups on the computer because this is not a piece for display, this is a piece for use in books and on websites. So I have already scanned my work. I scan my work at 600 dpi because I like to use it uh, larger sometimes. Uh, sometimes I'll put stuff in banners or I'll print stuff at twice the size that it was originally done at. Um, but you can just do 300 dpi if you're working for print. Still it's nice to have the option to go bigger if you want to. I have already uh, gone in and clicked on the layer and done a create layer from background so that I can edit the area under the layer. I usually rotate my work a little. Uh, my scanner doesn't always scan things perfectly straight. And here I've gone into the image adjustment curves menu. The curves menu allows you more control over the brightness and darkness of your piece than uh, just the contrast menu does. I start by pulling the top right point in the corner of that line over toward the uh, center so that that makes the uh, lightest parts of the image lighter. Uh, then I'll go down to the uh, bottom left corner of that line and pull that more toward the center. That will make the darkest parts of the drawing darker. From there you can uh, click points along the line and pull them up to get them lighter or down to get them darker. I usually make two additional points uh, in the center of the line and Really, you just play with it until the image looks right. There are more precise things you can do with those uh, color picker icons along the bottom of the graph, but I usually just like to eyeball it. I feel like I get a little more control that way, and like I said, I do my uh, work for uh, graphic artist purposes, not photography purposes. I used to work at a newspaper and at a newspaper you don't want to blow out or alter the colors too much because you're you know trying to stay true to real life because newspapers are supposed to be about the truth. Then in the layer beneath my drawing I'm just applying white to the edges of the piece so that I can merge it down and have the entire background be white. The reason it's off, again, is because I rotated the layer that is my painting, so that left a transparent edge. Then I merge those two bottom layers together so I don't have to worry about them anymore, and I create a new layer on top where we can start adding uh, tonal adjustments, uh, some brightness, and some whites. I personally like adding pure white as the highlight in eyes. I think making the little white highlight in the eyes the brightest point of the painting really draws your eye there. I just use a hard round brush, very small, and dot two points of light in there. I later go on and add a second point of light. And I uh, do move it over to the other side just because looking at the nose uh, and the cheek and the jaw, you could see the light is actually coming from the other side. So it should be on our right, labyrinth's left. Next I go in with a large round brush on a brand new layer and I 
large round soft brush uh, with a low flow to it and I just brighten up some of the highlights on the face that I lost when I put that wash uh, that glaze over it because obviously I put color over my whitest whites when I did it on all of the layers where I add highlights uh, except for those two brightest points in the eyes but on this layer and other layers I will use the layer blending modes uh, that's on the layer menus on the bottom right there it's usually at default normal um, I just click in it once click out of it and then use the up and down arrows to scroll through and quickly change the blending modes to see which blending mode works best for what I'm trying to do and I also adjust the opacity in the end I think the normal mode for these highlights around the face is the best mode and blending mode and then I go with 25 percent opacity I ran into some real problems with the hair it's actually because my the driver on my tablet stops working every once in a while and I lose pressure sensitivity I should be able to use a hard round brush but since the pressure sensitivity stopped working I couldn't get the tapers on the hair so I had to use an angled calligraphy brush instead I used it very small and fine to make up for the fact that I couldn't get any tapers at the ends of the lines and again I'm using plain hard white at a full flow because uh, when I lower the opacity of the layer it will let the color shine through so he won't look like he has gray hair when I'm done and of course I can't forget to add highlights to the eyebrows at the end as well they pick up light too next up is going to be some general but minor tweaks throughout the piece first up uh, I pick a very light skin tone and on labyrinth's right eye our left I lost some of the definition on we'll call it the shelf of the bottom eyelid uh, you can see very clearly on our right his left eye the definition the part where you can see the we'll call it the shelf or the ledge of the bottom eyelid I just wanted to adjust it so that's clearer on his other eye I go in with a hard round brush for this and then take away definition and soften it out with a very large soft eraser and just the edges of the eraser until it looks like it matches the style of the other eye when I'm done the drawing portion of that I switch the layer blending mode to soft light and finally on another layer we're going to adjust the lip color like I said I was a little nervous I haven't done this very often traditional art wise so I didn't want it to look like he was wearing lipstick if I accidentally overdid the red tones I do think I underdid the red tones so I fix it here I pick up the reddest tone I can from the cheeks using the eyedropper tool and go in with a soft brush on a new layer and just paint in over the lips to start I then switch the layer blending mode to color I think this could be redder still so I go into image adjustments hue saturation and move the bar to raise the saturation and also adjust the color so that it looks redder and then I play with the layer opacity until it's exactly where it looks good to my eye which to me is at 71 opacity oh and at the very end I transform the lips and uh, just make them I think 3% larger not the lips 
on the underpainting but my adjustment layer to color the lips just so that little bit of extra red extends a little further up and makes the blend a little cleaner. Before we see the finished piece, I'd just like to remind you fine folks that Labyrinth will appear in the sequels to our Challenger Confidential novella, Copper Knights and Granite Men, written by my husband and I. Each chapter of the book has an illustration by yours truly, and buying a copy from Amazon or other online booksellers helps the channel. A pretentious, super-powered musician, an ageless techno wizard, and a radioactive commando walk into a museum to find the patrons turned to stone. Copper Knights and Granite Men is a witty and suspenseful superhero adventure that draws from the King in Yellow mythos and taps the secret occult history of North America. All right, folks, I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Also, if you have any questions or advice about underpaintings that you'd like to share, please leave a comment below. Likewise, I'm always happy to field questions about art in general, and may even make your question or suggestion a future video topic. Most of all, though, thanks for watching my video, and I hope you have an awesome day. Presto, over and out. It is no small secret that I'm a big Hammer Horror fan. I thought it might be interesting to show you the best watercolor piece I could manage from back in 2013. This is a straight up portrait. Peter Cushing is a real person, so I didn't have to make up any features here. This is Cushing portraying Van Helsing from the Hammer Dracula films. I used India ink to make up for my weaknesses. Back then I had a really hard time not using outlines. My bread and butter in drawing is a comic book style. I still really love this piece, and I think it holds up well. The India ink definitely gives it those dark darks to contrast with the lighter watercolors. Those are from a Windsor and Newton travel set, by the way. This piece definitely has more mood and color saturation than the, lab than the Labyrinth piece I did before, but this was also done to be a finished piece and not an exercise. The original is still proudly hanging up in my hallway. Still, I think I'm better at capturing form and features now. I just have to put it all together in the future. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this blast from the past, and I hope you have an awesome day today. Presto, over and out.